Hello friends. So, as you all know, you know, I am not a biker. Neither I am a YouTuber. I am both basically a mechanic. So, the biggest challenge that I have when I am shooting a video is I do not have a dedicated person to hold the camera. So, most of the times the framing is off. You will not be able to see exactly what is happening. The video quality is very bad. The audio quality is terrible. So, you know, I basically never really enjoyed watching my own videos because whenever I see those videos, I see those flaws. I used to notice that, you know, the focus is off or I can't see things very clearly. I cannot understand what I was doing if, you know, so that kind of stopped me from watching my own videos. But there is one thing that I really liked about my videos was, you know, I tried to be as honest as possible. When I used to capture those videos, I used to just talk about what I feel. And I used to tell you exactly what used to come in my mind at that time. So that was what I really enjoyed about my videos. But having said that, that is something that everybody who watches the video won't understand. Some people might think, okay, you know, I'm not able to see things clearly. It's too dark. He shoots the videos during the night. He doesn't care about the sound quality. The sound quality is pretty bad. So it's actually very true. You know, the sound quality is indeed very bad. Uh, but the challenge was it's not the uh, equipment that was failing me. Because I bought a lapel mic uh, almost instantaneously, almost very close to when I started making a video. And then, you know, I have a dedicated podcast mic as of now, so <laughs> which I haven't used more than three times. And I actually was thinking that this whole thing is done very differently. And that is when I thought, you know, is YouTube that difficult or is making videos which actually clearly deliver your message or maybe you know uh, doesn't strain a person who is watching it. Uh, so I actually started doing a lot of research and I saw some channels initially before you know I get in there I always thought that you know these amazing videos are made by a huge camera crew where there is everybody you know, there is one person to hold the camera, there is one person to say the shot was nice, action, cut, all that. But uh, when I started watching some videos, uh, I realized that a lot of videos which have views in billions are actually created by people like, you know, sm very small camera crews or sometimes no camera crews. So there is this YouTuber called Doug DeMero and this guy is a one-man army and his views are in billions so basically that kind of takes out the idea that uh, you know you need to have a lot of people behind creating those videos so I'll, I'll come to my challenge so basically what i learned from doug is you do not need a huge camera crew you just need a tripod and a you know camera to basically start shooting great videos and of of course if you have a dedicated mic that will actually improve a lot uh, so my challenge is i do not have a person who can shoot my videos my problem is i'm always a very you know hands-on guy my hands get very dirty and you know i work in environments which has a lot of oil in it which has a lot of grease in it which has a lot of dirt in it so you know, it is very difficult to actually operate the camera, change the camera angles and stuff, especially when I'm shooting a video. So the saying that challenge exists, you know, it was very difficult for me to actually change the camera angle, pause it. So it always used to be a tripod or sometimes I will, you know, walk around with the camera and shoot at that time. I know many of you have complained that the videos are not stable and you're getting a headache. So that is where my challenge is but what i have decided to do now is i have tried 
a new experiment and this is the new experiment like you know i'm going to try a different format of this video and hopefully you know go around with the greasy hands problem and touching the camera multiple times problem and hopefully this video is going to be very different from what you have seen so far and there are two ways about it obviously there will be a lot of people who will love this new format and there will be people who don't like it so you know my humble request to you is if you love this video format do let me know what you loved you know i i would be really glad to see the comment section and you know see you guys telling me what you liked about it if you didn't like about it it's absolutely fine see you know there are movies made there are best movies there are worst movies so best movies are not liked by certain people worst movies are not liked by certain people so i'm not saying if you didn't understand the format or if you didn't like it you didn't understand my point maybe my point was not coming across maybe i thought that okay this is what will make you guys feel better about my videos but that is completely incorrect so in case if you have any concerns if you think that okay this video is not that great do feel free to let me know okay having said that now we are going to get into the content and i'm extremely sorry for taking your time like this to actually talk to you about this if you feel that you know this has wasted your time my apologies but if you really want uh, to improve this channel if you want to improve the videos i would appreciate your feedback so today's video is going to be about the tiger and possibly the last video about the tiger uh, so unfortunately what has happened is uh, i almost finished the tiger like the engine was completely done it was stabbed and the moment i kicked the kicker the engine was not completely moving it was moving let's say you know one turn and then it was getting stuck in both directions so i thought maybe the kicker spring is off so i actually removed the clutch side cover just to see if the kicker spring is the one causing issue it's not i removed the clutch i removed the crank primary gear and still the piston doesn't move so basically it could be multiple issues maybe you know uh, there is something wrong in the crank side i have to take the cylinder off to check uh, if we are lucky then you know most probably the little mechanic might have dropped a bolt because sometimes she does come to help me so if that is the case then as soon as we remove the cylinder we will be able to see that bolt and we will remove it okay so that could be the easiest way or else you know maybe something is gone bad like you know maybe the crank pin is off something is gone bad so let's hope that is not the case and let's hope we are able to fix it without much of a uh, you know hard work and spoiler alert i have already taken the clutch side out so you will see the completely rebuilt engine completely off now now what we are going to do is we are going to take the head off and also the cylinder off to see where the problem is uh, if the problem is something that we can solve like you know no lathe work is required then definitely we will put everything back today and we will start the engine and we will take it for a spin so that is the plan the time is roughly around 334 right now i'm hoping to finish this by 6 so that we can take it for a spin and i hope you guys are going to enjoy this video if you are going to enjoy this video give it a like um, and i'll start making more of these videos and try to you know tweak around the format and okay let's not waste any further time and let's get to the bike and let's see what actually is wrong and let's start working from there okay all right so as you can see the engine is completely taken apart now the only thing remaining is to take the cylinder out and i'm going to do that i'll take the cylinder off by removing those four 14 mm bolt i mean nuts and then we'll see if it is fixable if it is then we will immediately put everything back and we will start the bike so okay like i suggested our little mechanic has done something and hello so she is already out and i'll show you exactly what she did okay so there is a spring which she has put and which is actually behind the connecting rod here um, you can't see now so let me take that out using a magnet and then i'll show you so 
this is what the little mechanic has put inside the engine so we were successfully able to extract it and because of that now the engine is freely turning now let's go ahead and start assembling after the removing little mechanics handiwork the engine is spinning freely as you can see now what we have to do is we need to just install everything back and then start the bike Okay, so everything is fixed and all I need to do is now just see if the bike starts. I have put a little bit of petrol in the carburetor so ideally it should start. Let's see if it does. Okay, then if it does then all we have to do is just give it a nice wash and get it ready for delivery. So that is something that we will do once it starts. So let's try and start it. Okay, so this video is being shot after a couple of hours. I actually took a break in between. I went for a ride in the RD. It was super duper fun. I actually had a lot of fun after a very long time. So after that, I'm back home now. I just noticed one of the indicator is dangling. So you must have understood how much fun I had while riding the bike. It was actually awesome. So yeah, as you saw, um, we actually started the bike. It is running, which is a great thing. Now the next thing that we need to do is just fix everything up. So that is what is pending. Plus I have to clean the chain and probably I will hand over the bike in maybe this week itself as you know, there is not much left in it. So once this is completed, hopefully we'll do a ride video. I'm not sure. Um, there's nothing special to do a ride actually, but hopefully yes. So I'll just put a small montage of uh, polishing the tank after I painted it. And it was actually too much fun. So yeah, this bike is officially complete. Only needs a few things which will actually take me a couple of hours to fix. And once that is done, we will hand the bike over to the owner, my ex-boss, and hopefully he again falls in love with the bike and doesn't sell it. I have to wash the bike, it is all dirty, so it's not looking that great now, but it will start looking great once we finish the work. So yeah, that's the video today. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, like, share and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.